Not all close encounters can be so easily ignored. Some claim they have evidence that aliens are abducting humans for nefarious experiments. Come Lord Jesus, be our guest. May these gifts just be blessed. Amen. Tim Cullen is a cement worker who lives in Yuma, Colorado with his wife Janet, a registered nurse. A recent x-ray revealed a strange object lodged inside Cullen's body. He has no puncture wound or scar, but there is a repressed memory of a terrifying event in his past. It wasn't 30 seconds after they told me that I had a piece of metal in my arm that I knew where it came from. In the secret world of close encounters, stories have surfaced of people being taken against their will by extraterrestrials. One who claims to have been abducted is Tim Cullen. In May 1978, Tim and Janet Cullen were driving home from Denver when a bright light appeared on the horizon. Wow, look at that. Suddenly, an unidentified flying object hovered right in their path. It was large and cylinder-shaped and had multiple lights. It wasn't a helicopter and it wasn't an airplane. It wasn't anything I'd ever seen before. That's what is bit. that? Wow. It's going to cross right over the road. And the craft seemed to come back up toward the road. As it did that, I felt telepathic communication with the creatures inside. Has it changed me? Yeah, it's changed me. Uh, do I find it easy to talk about? No, it, it'll probably never be easy. Because I know what I'm saying. Tim believes the encounter led to his abduction, and although he has no recall of the experience, he believes he received an implant that continues to be monitored by aliens. My arm used to buzz. The buzzing sensation was more regular and getting more intense. And uh, as I was aware of it, I, would kind of, I felt that it would be aware of some of my thoughts at times and my emotions and react to those. Worried about the sensation he was experiencing, Cullen met with a doctor who examined his arm. An x-ray revealed that Tim had an object embedded in his left wrist. I believe it's possible that this certainly could be an alien implant. I've been around Tim for the past almost 24 years, and whenever he's had an injury or a splinter in his finger, I've been there to remove it for him, and I think I would have known about it if he would have had an injury. Reluctant to expose his experience to his personal doctor, Cullen turned to the internet. One year later, his search led him to Dr. Roger Lear, a California podiatrist. Dr. Lear removes objects that patients suspect have been implanted by aliens and provides his service for free. I am 100% convinced that, uh, number one, these objects are placed uh, in the human body by someone or being using a technology which far exceeds our because we do not have the ability to put something in the body without making a portal of entry that's and that's just where it starts dr lear carefully screens all his patients before considering an implant removal the individual must have a conscious recall of some involvement uh, with a ufo or, or an abduction scenario over the years, the number of qualified participants have multiplied. Tim Cullen meets the criteria and agrees to travel to Los Angeles to have the object removed by Dr. Lear. When Tim had the surgery scheduled, I really wanted to go along with him because I'm a registered nurse and I wanted to make sure that everything was done, you know, the right techniques were followed, but yes, I was apprehensive about it. I am not afraid of anything no matter how they come at it or what they do. I figured they'd studied me for 20 years. Couldn't prove it was an alien implant until it was taken out. <laughs> you can say what you want, but you gotta have proof, you know? Tim didn't want to tell anybody the story for 20 years for fear of reprisals against uh, him and his family. This was a very uh, compelling uh, human uh, scenario which uh, propelled me into doing something for him. The day of the surgery, a group of ufologists and journalists assemble to witness the event. General surgeon Dr. John Matriciano is on hand to perform the procedure. 
he is skeptical of making an alien connection to a piece of debris found in the human body. I'm basically a non-believer. You know, I think it's somewhat arrogant of us to think that if there were some creatures that come see us. Don't breathe too much, you're going to pass out. Cullen is numb for the entire procedure. I'm make a small incision right here, not a big one. Did that hurt you? No. Twenty minutes later, a quarter-inch object is removed from his wrist. According to Dr. Lear, the first abnormal sign is the lack of a cyst surrounding the object, which in 20 years would have grown to the size of an almond. In a normal situation where a foreign body has been inside the human body for a prolonged period of time, there's a fibrous cyst called an inclusion cyst that forms. In this case, there was none. Looks like a boy to me. <laughs> but Cullen's humor belies the importance that the object might mean in proving the existence of alien life and contact with the human species. The object is placed in a plastic vial containing plasma from Cullen's blood to preserve it. To secure the evidence, the implant is sealed in a tamper-resistant vial in front of witnesses. Dr. Lear takes the specimen to be analyzed at Digital Instruments, a research laboratory near Santa Barbara, California. They agree to their first alien implant examination, viewing it as an opportunity to put their new atomic force microscope to the test. So that's the sample here, and I'm going to put in on a bit of epoxy here. Dr. Irene Rivenko has a PhD in biology and is also a medical doctor. Under the microscope, the so-called implant appears to have some unusual traits. I've never seen really this kind of pattern. I would guess that people who work on material science can see this kind of structure on some metal, maybe. But in biology, I've never really seen anything like that. Puzzled by the lack of a fibrous cyst, she probes what looks like a thin membrane encasing the object. We just got a little piece of this material and we're going to let it dry in, dry in air. Um, this is what we get after a few minutes in air. And this part here is still very squishy, very soft. If I press on the other part of the tissue, here it's very hard. It looks like a resin, something like a plastic. I've never seen this before in human tissues. A second opinion from a government laboratory that chooses to remain anonymous found the object to be highly unusual, amorphous and magnetic, a combination that does not exist in any form of metal today. Exactly what this object is remains unclear, but Dr. Lear is hopeful that each removal brings us closer to the source of these objects, whether earthly or not. Some of the things that we found in the implant surgery, such as the membrane, which seems to allow a foreign object to be placed in the human body and prevent the human body from rejecting it, I think is a most important thing. And if we could understand this better and duplicate it, why we would have a tremendous benefit to medical science. Though the tests are not conclusive, Cullen still believes the implant is better off in the hands of science than in his own. I'll tell you what, that research on the membrane has made me feel real good. I think it's the only truly piece of this puzzle that we can solve for right now. People around him have been very supportive. I was kind of, I guess, naive, thinking, well, we'll go to California, and if you have this removed, and then we'll just go back to our little life in Yuma, but that's not the way it's been. Tim has wanted to get the word out about what happened to him and to get more people aware of it. It's definitely different <laughs> than life used to be. This is a donation can for Tim Cullen, sending him one way to Mars. All donations is welcome. Tim, I'm going to present this to you. Well, thank you, Mary. Since the surgery, Tim Cullen's tale of an alien abduction has made him a celebrity and a curiosity in Yuma, Colorado.
Although he knows many are skeptical of his story, Cullen says the event was real and it's happening to others. I wonder if anybody here tonight has had any experience. In Barbara Lamb is a regression therapist who specializes in treating patients who believe they've had contact with aliens. She witnessed Tim Cullen's surgery and says the time has come for people to accept the possibility that abductions are occurring. Be as open-minded as possible about the fact that these very unusual things are happening. I think that there has been a lot of prejudice about UFOs and extraterrestrials and people who claim to experience these contacts. Whoa. Yeah, that one's, oh that one's the one. That one's wow. the one. That's my husband. <laughs> Her weekly support group has been growing steadily for five years. I just had um, this really large headed being with this low chin um, take me on a ship and then they put me back down. The people can discuss their own experiences and compare notes with other people and when they talk to other people who've met some of the same beings or have had some of the same procedures happen and yet these people who seem to be very normal, likable, functional people, that's very reassuring to each one of the experiencers at least allow for the possibility that this could be happening because indeed so many of us do have a true sense of knowing that this is indeed real.